we shall reign in life by one Jesus. You know, at the right hand of God, as our high priest, and if he is our high priest forever, it tells us one thing, we are blessed forever. Don't you know that? You are blessed forever. You have to know that. You are blessed forever. Now, Romans chapter 1, verse 16 again. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Are you a believer? Amen. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, referring back to the gospel of Christ, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, in this uh, passage, in these two verses that we read, I want you to underline, first of all, gospel of Christ. And then secondly, underline the word righteousness. And then underline the Praise faith to faith. The gospel of Christ, the righteousness of God, and then faith to faith. So titinan po natin ito pong tatlong mga bagay nito. Okay? The righteousness of God, the gospel of Christ, and then faith to faith. If you are taking notes, pwede po natin gawin title yung Grace, faith, and righteousness. Grace, faith, and righteousness. Well, of course, we know that the gospel of Christ is the gospel of grace. The word gospel simply means good news. Sabi natin, good news. In fact, yung pong salitang good news or yung salitang gospel in the original Greek ay uh, ito po nung mga panahon pong yun ay bihira po itong gamitin. Outside of the Bible, the original word euangelos, ito po ay sa mga mga Greek literary works at the time ay mga bihira po itong gamitin. So in other words, ay ito po yung salita sa Greek na uh, hindi gaano ginagamit. Subalit, ito po'y ginamit po ni Apostle Paul. Simply because, literally, this good news means nearly too good to be true news. Nearly too good to be true news. Nakapagkanarnig po ng mga pangkaraniwang tao, ay tila ba kayo mahirap paniwalaan? Yung bang balita na nagsasabing lahat ng ating kasalanan ay pinatawad na ng Diyos past, present, and future? Diba? The first time that you hear the news that God already forgave you of all your sins, past, present, and future, you know what? Para bagang mahirap, you know, it is nearly too good to be true. Imagine, Maging yung mga kasalanan po natin na hindi pa natin nagagawa, pinatawad na ng Diyos, it is too good to be true news. But that is the truth. Amen? That's why it takes, you know, the God kind of faith to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just, just, just uh, an ordinary human faith is not enough to believe this, you know, uh, nearly too good to be true news. But the good news is God even gave us the faith to believe. He gave us faith to believe. So, maging yung parang napalataya natin na kung saan ay nagawa nating manampalataya sa mabuting balita ng ating Panginoon, ito rin po ay galing sa Kanya. It is the gift of God. In, in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, the Bible tells us there, For by grace are we saved through faith. Sabi natin, grace through faith. For by grace are we saved through faith and that not of yourselves. That faith is not of yourselves. Now, 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 we don't have to go into that. So, that faith is not of yourselves. 
that faith is the gift of God. Not of works. That faith is not of works. Lest any man should boast. Amen. So in other words, God gave us the faith to believe this nearly too good to be true news. The news that tells us because of what Jesus Christ has done, we have been forgiven of all our sins, past, present, and future. The good news that because of what Jesus Christ has done, praise God, Christ is now our life. Christ is now living on the inside of us. Praise God. We are in Him. Christ is in us. Praise the Lord forevermore. So, gospel in its original uh, meaning means nearly too good to be true news. Okay? And Paul said, I am not ashamed to preach this nearly too good to be true news. I'm not ashamed to uh, uh, preach the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Okay? And of course, we know that the gospel of Christ is the gospel of grace. The gospel of grace is the gospel of Christ. If it is not the gospel of grace, it is not the gospel of Christ. Paul was very clear on that. Now, go with me to the book of Galatians chapter 1 once again. Galatians chapter 1. Praise God. Now, verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the what? Into the grace of Christ. God called us into the grace of Christ. And then he said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So notice the grace of Christ is being referred to as a gospel. Okay. Now verse 7. Which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So, maliwanag po, that the gospel of Christ is, the, is being referred to as the grace of Christ. Now, there's another gospel. If it is not grace, it is not the gospel. Amen? It will be another gospel, a perversion of the gospel of Christ. There is only one gospel. There is only one good news. The good news is all about Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ has done. There's only one good news. There's only one gospel. The gospel of Christ. Sometimes the gospel of Christ is being referred to as the gospel of the grace of God. In Galatians chapter, uh, in Acts chapter 20. Sometimes it is being referred to as the gospel of the kingdom. Sometimes the gospel of Christ is being referred to as the gospel of grace. But there is only one good news. It is all about Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ has already done. It is not about you. It is not about me. It is not about us and what we need to do. It is all about Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ has already done. Okay, that's the gospel. Amen? Praise God. So again, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, which is the gospel of grace. And then Paul said, For it is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel of Christ, which is the gospel of grace, is the power of God. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Are you a believer? Okay. So the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. The word salvation again is the uh, 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 Greek word soteria. It simply means salvation, deliverance, safety, preservation, what is uh, wholeness, healing, well-being. So yun po ang ibig sabihin po ng salvation. It covers every area of our lives. Whatever your need may be, ano man pong ating pangilangan, whether it is healing, uh, whether it is uh, deliverance uh, from this or deliverance from that, whether it is prosperity, whether it is uh, well-being, whatever your need may be, the answer is in the gospel of Christ. Amen? Naroon po ang kasagutan, ang katagunan po ay naroon po sa mabuting balita ng ating Panginoon Kristo. Okay? And to salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. So, regardless uh, kung ano po yung background sa tao, okay, as long as he is a believer, hindi po mahalaga kung ano po yung dating nating background. Da- maaaring tayo day, dating Hudyo o dating uh, uh, Hintil o ano man po ang ating pong, uh, 
uh, background, ano ang pong kulay ng ating pong balat, you know, the Bible tells us that in Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, in Christ there is neither bond nor free, in Christ there is neither male nor female. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Malaga po, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, in the gospel of Christ, the righteousness of God. Notice, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God is revealed. Okay? So every time the gospel of Christ, which is the gospel of grace, is being preached, preached uh, 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 the, the, the righteousness of God must be revealed. If not, kapag kayo po ang pinapangaral po sa atin at ang narinig po natin ay hindi po purong mabuting balita. It is a mixture of law and grace, mixture of old covenant and new covenant. You know what? It is the self-righteous of man that is being revealed. Okay? We don't need the revelation of self-righteousness. We need the revelation of the righteousness of God. For therein, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just, those who are made righteous, shall live by faith. Okay, now, with that, I, uh, <clears throat> I will be uh, giving you at least four important statements. Number one, faith without grace is dead works. Faith without grace is dead works. So in other words, ang pananampalataya po na hindi nakabase sa biyaya ng ating Panginoon, ito po ay magresulta sa tinatag ng Biblia na dead works. Na tayo po sa word of faith, uh, without even realizing it, you know, I, I've heard a word of faith preacher, you know, uh, uh, said, several years ago, sabi niya, we in the word of faith, uh, without even realizing it, na hindi natin alam na ang ating pananampalataya ay hindi na grace-based faith, kundi nagiging work-based faith. In other words, nagpasimula po tayo sa grace-based faith, we were saved by grace through faith, and then we, were, we are trying to maintain our salvation by works. We are trying to attain spirituality by works. We are trying to, you know, to, to earn the blessings of God by works. Okay, although we are using faith lingo, so to speak. Okay, five steps to this, you know, five steps to that. You know, if you follow these uh, five steps, you know, then you will become successful. So, hindi natin alam na bumabalik po tayo doon sa works. Bagamat, you know, tinatawag natin at sarili tayo mga word of faith people, you know, although we, we use faith lingo, so to speak, eh, but, but without even realizing it, yung ating pananampalataya ay mula sa pagiging grace-based ay bumabaksak sa work-based faith. Okay? And, 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 and a lot of people in the word of faith don't even realize that. So, kinakailangan po na hindi, kinakailangan po na yung faith at grace parati po yung dapat na magkasama. Faith and grace should be inseparable. Amen? Everything that we receive from God, you know, from salvation, you know, uh, uh, maging yung ating pong daily Christian life, everything that we receive from God, from Alpha to Omega, we receive from God by grace through faith. Salvation by grace through faith. Forgiveness of sins by grace through faith. Amen? Healing by grace through faith. Prosperity by grace through faith. Kinakailangan po ang ating pananampalataya ay kinakailangan manatili po na naka-anchor doon po sa tinatawag nating biyaya ng ating Panginoon. Our faith should always be based on Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ has done. Now, without even realizing it, you know, a lot of people today, they have more faith in what they can do more than what God has already done. Amen? If your faith is, is in what you can do in order for you to become successful, 
if your faith is in what you do in order for you to, to succeed in life, if your faith is, in, is based on what you do in order for you to get your healing, then that is not grace-based faith. Amen? Our faith should always be based on Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ has done. Never on what we do, but on what Jesus Christ has already done. Are you following me so far? Okay. So grace based faith. Now, Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Galatians 2, 16. It says here, Knowing that a man is not justified or made righteous by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. So we were made righteous, not by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified or made righteous by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now in chapter 3 verse 12, it says here, But no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. Sabi natin, the law is not of faith. Say it again, the law is not of faith. So maliwanag po, the law is not of faith. In other words, faith will never work under the law. Amen? Under the old covenant of law, people operated by works. Under the new covenant of grace, we live by faith. Under law, people live by works. Under grace, we live by faith. The just, those who were made righteous under the new covenant of grace, live by faith. Amen? So, maliwanag po yan. Okay? We live by faith. We are not trying to attain righteousness by the works of the law. We are not trying to earn the blessing of God by the works of the law. Okay, we live by faith. Okay, now. So, faith without grace would be dead works. Dead work is anything that we do with an old covenant mindset. Dead work is anything that we do with an old covenant mindset. Amen? Maaring ito pong work na ito ay mabuti. Okay? How many of you agree with me that reading your Bible every day is a good work to do? How many of you agree with me that praying in the morning is good? How many of you agree with me that, you know, giving your tithes and offerings, uh, 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 they are good? So there are good works. Amen? Going to the mission field is a good work. Okay? So helping people that are in need are good works. There are good works to do. There are good works. But if we are doing these good works with an old covenant mindset of do good, get good, do bad, get bad, do less, uh, get less, do more, get more, then those good works become dead works. Amen? So we need to renew our mind. Renewing the mind, you know, uh, 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 for me, renewing the mind is simply renewing our mind from having an old covenant mindset into having a new covenant mindset. Amen? So, whatever we do today, kung tayo man po ay nagbibigay, kung tayo man po ay nagbabasa ng Biblia, kung tayo man po ay nanalangin, kung tayo man po ay uh, tumutulong sa mga nangailangan, a time man po ay dumadalo sa church or, you know, involved tayo sa mga ministry whatever we do, we are doing these good works not because we are trying to earn the blessings of God, not because we are trying to please God through our performance no, we are doing these good works not because we have to, we are doing these good works because we want to 
Amen. Everything that we do should be our positive response to what God has already done. So that's faith. Faith is everything that we do. Faith is just our positive response to what God has already done. So it will be just an automatic response, so to speak. Amen? Na kung saan ay ang ating pong puso ay magiging punong-puno po ng pasalamat. You know, gratitude. Our hearts will be full of gratitude and thanksgiving. You know, and, and, and uh, we can just be helping. You know, but, but, but you know, to, to do these good things. Amen? We pray not because we are trying to become righteous. We pray because we know righteous people pray. Righteous people pray. Righteous people go to church. Righteous, righteous people give. Righteous people help the need, the, those who are in need. You know, we are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. But faith without grace is what? Dead work. Okay? Now, pangalawa Grace without faith is powerless. So, faith without grace would be dead works. And then, the flip side would be, grace without faith is powerless. Although grace is the power of God, but if you don't believe, you know, the grace of God will, be, will, will do you no good. There's only one way for us to benefit. There's only one way for us to access. There's only one way for us to receive the grace of God, which is the power of God that is through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't you know that the grace of God has the power to save everybody in this planet earth? Don't you know that the finished work of Jesus Christ has the power to save everybody? But not everybody is saved. Why? Because not everybody believes. Are you still with me? Not everybody is saved because not everybody believes. So in other words, grace without faith is powerless. Now go with me to Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 and then we will focus on the next verse, verse 21. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, but 2 verse 20 please. But I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Notice, the life which I now live. No, Christ is in us. And the life which we now live in the flesh. We are still in this physical body. While we are still in this physical body, you know, Paul said, the life which I now live. Are you living? Are you alive? Are you still in that physical body? So Paul said, the life which I now live in the flesh, in this physical body, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Amen? There's only one way to live. That is by faith. By faith in the Son of God or of the Son of God, who loved me. So we have to focus more on how much the Son of God loves us. Okay, the more you know that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, loves you, the more you can trust Him. Even in the natural. If you know that particular person really loves you, you can trust Him. Are you still with me? How much more with our God? He loves you unconditionally and He loves you with an everlasting love. There is no reason why we cannot trust Him. Amen. He loves us with an everlasting love, with an unconditional love. There's no reason why we cannot trust Jesus Christ. And Paul said, you know, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. Ano ba ba ang ebidensya na is nating makita para malaman natin talagang tayo mahal ang ating Panginoon? He already did what he has to do. Amen. He gave himself for us. Now the next verse, verse 21. I do not prostrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So in other words, okay, when we live by the faith of the Son of God, we do not prostrate the Son of God. Another word for prostrate, I do not nullify the grace of God. I don't render the grace of God powerless in my life. Amen. In other words, when we live by the faith of the Son of God, we don't render the, the, the grace of God powerless in our lives. So it is possible for a believer, you know, to render the grace of God powerless in, in his life or in her life. How? Through unbelief. Amen? Through unbelief. 
So through unbelief, we render the grace of God powerless in our own lives. But the grace of God is the power of God. Every time you believe, the grace of God becomes the power of God in your life. Amen? So don't render the grace of God powerless in your life through unbelief. Amen? Praise God forevermore. Okay? Hallelujah. So the gospel of grace is the power of God. Everything has to do, that, that has to be received by faith. Praise God. Oh, glory to God. Now, pangatlo po, nanais ko pong bigyan ng punan din. Now, before that, uh, also, go with me to Galatians. Let me see if I, 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 I wrote the, the right verse. Okay. The same Galatians chapter 2. Ah. Okay. Yeah, we just read verse 20. Uh, we should have re- read from verse 17. But anyway, uh, let's go to the next point. Number one, faith without grace is what? Dead works. Number two, grace without faith is what? Powerless. Number three, grace without righteousness is permissiveness. Grace without righteousness is permissiveness. Now, I can understand, now I I understand those people, those uh, people in the church who accuse us that we are giving people license to sin when we preach too much on grace. I can, I can, I can, I can understand. Nauno ako po kung saan po sila nanggagaling. Na tayo daw po na nagtuturo ng grace, we are giving people license to sin. In other words, license to sin or licentiousness simply means permissiveness. Now that would be true if we don't have the revelation of the righteousness of God. That would be true if we don't have the revelation of who we are in Christ. Okay? Without the revelation that you have been made righteous by God. That as new believers, as new creation in Christ, you know, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And, and with this revelation that we are as much righteous as Jesus Christ is, everything that Jesus Christ is in, 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 in uh, at the right hand of God, we are in this world. Okay? Now, hindi po pwede po pumasok po yung tinatawag na permissiveness. Hindi po pwede po na with the revelation of who we are in Christ, with the revelation that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, hindi po pwede po na abusuhin po natin Yung pong grace ng ating Panginoon. So yung po yung uh, kanila pong uh, uh, misconception. Yung kanila pong uh, sabihin na natin na apprehension. That preaching too much grace, you know, will result to licentiousness or will result to people, you know, abusing and misusing the grace of God. Anyway, you know, nandiyan naman ang grace ng Panginoon. Anyway, God has already forgiven us of all our sins, past, present, and future. Then, you know, pwede na tayong magwala. Pwede na tayong, you know, pwede na tayong uh, 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 gawin natin ang gusto natin gawin, something like that. So, yung po kanilang apprehension. Now, doon po sa mga tao po, na wala pang kapahayagan po ng tinatawag na righteous of God, then maaaring ganun po ang kanila pong uh, uh, kahinatan. Merong katotohanan sa kanila apprehension. Okay? Those people who don't know who they are in Christ, those people who don't know their new and true identity in Christ, those people in the church that have, you know, identity crisis, maaaring totoo po na kapag ka, Grace ay patu- uh, ang kanda po narinig ay gawin po nila itong lisensya para po magkasala. But don't you know that people don't need license to sin? Are you still with me? In the same manner that, that people don't need license to drive. Don't you know, right now, marami po mga driver dyan sa kalsada, okay, a certain percentage of drivers right now Diyan po sa Alabang Sapote Road, wala po lisensya. I said, you don't need license to drive. 
Now, before I got my license, my driver's license, I have been driving already. <laughs> okay? 1987, 1988, I have, I have been already driving. 1989 ko lang napuha ang aking lisensya. So, hindi ko kinakala lisensya para mag-drive. Are you still here with me? So, in the same manner, people don't need license to sin. People are sinning without license. You don't have to give people license in order for them to sin. People are already sinning without license. So, the apprehension of people is, you know, when you preach too much grace, you know, people will use that, you know, and, 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 and they, will, they will just go on sinning. No, that's not true. If you have the revelation of who you are in Christ Jesus. That's why the Apostle Paul, I, kung meron pong church na nabubuhay po sa kasalanan, immorality, you know, fornication here, ad, a, a, adulterous affair here, and, and imagine, you know, men in the church, they, are, they were committing fornication with, with, with temple prostitutes. Ay yung pong Corinthian church. And yet, how did the Apostle Paul deal with the immorality in the church. Paul reinforced the truth of who they are in Christ. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Don't you know that you are sanctified? You are, you are justified uh, and, and, and you are uh, uh, redeemed and so on and so forth. Okay? Pinakita po ni Pablo yung kanya pong identity. Kapag meron po mga believers sa church na tila baga sila po'y nagwawala, ika nga, nabubuhay sa kasalanan, isang po problema po nila, identity crisis. Meron silang identity crisis. Hindi po nila alam na sila po ay ginawa ng matuwid ng Diyos. God already made them righteous. And the more you know that you are the righteousness of God, that God has cleansed you and washed you from all your sins, you know, pag dumating po yung pong uh, uh, temptation to sin, you know what? You can easily overcome sin. Amen? Now, I like this illustration by, by uh, 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 coming from Andrew Farley. Ang sabi niya sa kalapong bahay, meron po silang uh, several rooms in their house and he mentioned particularly two rooms in his house. Ang sabi niya, yung una po ay uh, yung pong uh, meron silang guest room. Na kapag meron po mga bigla ang mga visitor, ay nakahanda parati po yung guest room. At yung pong guest room na yun ay well kept, well maintained. Malinis po. Yung pong kama, malinis parate. You know, yung kanyang wife would see to it that the, the guest room would always be clean. Wala pong trash. Bago parati po yung uh, 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 kobre kama. You know, at napakalinis po ng room. Okay? In contrast, yung kanya pong uh, uh, yung po, kanya pong workplace, meron po siyang isang room doon sa bahay na ginawa niyang parang opisina. Naku, nagkalat po yung mga, mga kung ano-ano, yung mga boxes ng mga ganito equipment, you know, ang, ang gulo-gulo. Ang gulo-gulo po ng kanyang room. Okay? Yung kanya pong uh, office doon po sa loob ng bahay. So, wala pong kaayusan. Yun naman pong guest room, maayos na maayos, malinis na malinis. Yung kanya naman pong opisina, magulo at marumi. Halimbawa, ikaw, ay sabi niya just in case you were in, in, in the receiving area at nakakita ka ng trust, basura okay at isa lamang ang choice mo itapon yung basura either in one of those two rooms okay binuksan mo po yung guest room napakalinis, napakaayos Binuksan mo po yung pong opisina, magulo, marumi. Saan mo itatapon yung pong trust, yung basura? Doon sa room na maayos at malinis? Doon ibabalibag ang basura? O doon sa room na magulo at marami pong nagkalat? Doon sa maraming kalat. Doon mo itatapon yung basura. Amen? Now, depende po yan kung anong tingin mo sa iyong sarili. Bila manan palataya. Ikaw ba'y katulad po ng guest room na malinis at maayos? Ginawang matuwid ng Diyos? Ginawang banal ng Diyos? Pinatawad sa lahat ng kasalanan? Nililis ang dugo ni Kristo? 
o ikaw ang tingo sa sarili mo ay katulad po nung pong opisina na magulo at uh, maraming uh, mga kalat na kung saan ikaw ay, you know, ay uh, ha, maraming kasalanan hindi pa pinatatawad ni Lord at tingin mo, you know, you are just an old sinner saved by grace, you know, and so on and so forth. Kapag dumating po yung temptation to sin, okay, kapag ang tingin mo po ay, ay ikaw ay katulad po ng room na magulo at marami po nagkalat, eh, anyway, eh, makasalanan na ako, anyway, marumi ako eh, eh, bakit pa? Eh, okay lang. ba? I might as well do it all the way na lang. Anyway, wala na akong magawa. I'm just an old, I'm just an old sinner. Okay? As long as I am here on this earth, wala akong, wala akong uh, uh, kakayahan para po paglabanan ng kasalanan. No? I might as well go all the way na lang. Something like that. But once you realize that like the guest room, God has already made you righteous, God has cleansed you, God made you holy, God already forgave you of all your sins, when temptation to sin comes, you will not defile the temple. Amen? You can easily overcome temptation to sin. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, I am faithful to my wife. Okay? Because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, you know, uh, 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 I, 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 I can forgive those who, 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 who sin against me. I can, I can, you know, accept people the way God accepts me. I can love people the way God loves me. I can forgive people the way God forgives me. Amen? Don't you know that that is what the Apostle Paul said? Paul said, love one another even as Christ, God in Christ Jesus has loved you. Jesus Christ said, love one another as I have loved you. The more you know that God loves you, the more you can love one another. Not only that, Paul said, accept one another, you know, in the same manner that God already has accepted you. Do you believe that God already accepted you in the beloved? So we can accept, we can accept one another because we know God already accepted us. Not only that, forgive one another as God in Christ Jesus has already forgiven you. Amen? So once you realize who you are in Christ, praise God. Hallelujah. Then uh, you, will, you, will, you will live, you will live your life based on how you identify yourself. Amen? Praise God. So righteousness is a state of being. Righteousness has nothing to do with our doing. Righteousness is our being. Being produces the doing, not the other way around. Okay? Right believing produces life, uh, right living. Sabi nga ni Joseph Prince, okay? So grace without righteousness is pervasiveness. So, but once we receive the revelation that we are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus through the gospel of grace. The Bible tells us, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, in the gospel of Christ, in the gospel of grace, the righteousness of God is revealed. Amen? So you don't have to worry. Okay? You don't have to worry about people saying, you know, uh, be careful, the more, the more, Grace of God is preached to you. Uh, you may abuse the grace of God. You may misuse the grace of God. And, and, and you may use the grace of God as license to sin. That is not true. Okay? If you have the revelation of who you are in Christ, if you know that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, pray, praise God, grace with righteousness is right living. Amen? Praise God. Okay, now. So yung pong pangatlo, grace without righteousness is permissiveness. Number four, righteousness without grace is self-righteousness. You know, the, the flip side. Righteousness without grace is self-righteousness. Are you still with me? In other words, righteousness that is not anchored, that is not based on the grace of God is self-righteousness. 
Righteousness under the law is self-righteousness. We all know that. They're trying to attain righteousness by the works of the law. And that is self-righteousness. But righteousness under the new covenant of grace will be equivalent to the righteousness of God. So not self-righteousness, but the righteousness of God. Amen? Now the Pharisees and the Sadducees, so they, they were classic example of self-righteous people. Okay? The Pharisees and the Sadducees. So they were classic example of self-righteous people. Amen? But, you know, righteousness with grace or based on the grace of God is the righteousness of God. So the gospel of grace reveals the righteousness of God. Now a lot of people talk about righteousness, they preach about righteousness, but, but, you know, but at the back of their mind, what they are really preaching is self-righteousness. Human effort, self-righteousness. Okay? Kapag yung righteousness po, if righteousness is defined by what you do, that is self-righteousness. Again, if righteousness is defined by what you do, that is self-righteousness. Amen? Okay? What I'm saying is this nation needs the preaching of the gospel of Christ. We need more than just behavior modification. Okay? We need heart transformation. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only power of God that can transform the heart of the nation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. So, yung po righteousness na pinipris po, even by, by, by some of our brothers in the body of Christ, righteousness exalt a nation. That is true. Kung ang pinag-uusapan natin ay righteousness of God. It is the righteousness of God that will exalt the nation. Not the righteousness of man. Not self-righteousness. It is the righteousness of God that will exalt the nation. Amen? Okay, not the righteousness of man. Okay? So, righteousness should not be defined by what we do. Righteousness should be defined by what Jesus Christ has already done. On the cross of Calvary. Ano bang ginawa ni Cristo? Okay? On the cross of Calvary, Jesus Christ, who you know sin. But on the cross, He was made sin. So that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It has nothing to do with what we do. It has something to do with what Jesus Christ has done. On the cross, Jesus was made sin. So that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? So that's the righteousness of God based on grace. So righteousness with grace is simply self-righteousness. Walang pinag doon sa self-righteousness ng mga Pharisees and the Sadducees. Okay? Righteous without grace is self-righteousness. Okay? But thank God, righteousness based on grace based on the finished work of the cross, is the righteousness of God. And the day you receive Christ, that was the day you received the gift of God's righteousness. Not only that God made you the righteousness of God. And that will never change. We don't grow in righteousness. We grow in the revelation of righteousness, but we don't grow in righteousness. Okay? The same righteousness that I received way back 1981 when I got born again is the same righteousness that I have right now. The same righteousness that, that I will have when, when we get to heaven someday. Amen? The same righteousness. Why? There is only one righteousness and that is the righteousness of God. And when we talk about the righteousness of God, okay, the righteousness of God is not 80% righteous now and then later on it could become 85% righteousness and then later on it could become 90% righteousness 95% righteousness and probably 20 years from now you can attain 100% righteousness or 100% righteousness when you go to heaven no, 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 no the day you got born again God made you 100% righteous amen. Jesus Christ is our righteousness amen. amen who is more righteous Jesus or you 
No difference. As he is, so are we. As he is righteous, so are we righteous in this world. Amen? Not when we get to heaven someday. So you better believe that. You are the righteousness of God. Now, now, but if at the back of our mind, we still define righteousness based on what we do, parang it's nearly too good to be true news. How could I become righteous? Paano ko sabihin ako'y righteous? Eh, kanina lamang nag-away kami mag-asawa. Paano ko sabihin righteous ako? Eh, kahapon lamang meron ako ginawang ganitong palpak. Okay? Your righteousness as a believer is not defined by what you do. Are you still with me? Your righteousness as, de- as a believer is defined by what Jesus Christ has done. He who knew no sin on the cross, he was made sin. Lahat ng ating kasalanan, ipinato ng Diyos kay Kristo Jesus. Okay, so that we might be made the righteousness of God. That was a divine exchange. We need to understand that the cross of Calvary was a divine exchange. Kinuha niyang ating kasalanan upang matanggap natin ang kanyang katuwiran. Kinuha niyang ating kamatayan upang matanggap natin ang kanyang buhay na wala hanggan. Amen? Praise God forevermore. Okay? So again, righteousness without grace is simply self-righteousness. What do you think Faith without grace is what? I can hear you. Okay. Grace without faith is what? Powerless. Grace without righteousness is what? Permissiveness. Righteousness without grace is what? Self-righteousness. Did you learn something today? Come on, just bless the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you have been blessed by today's message, we would like to give you an opportunity to partner with us through your gifts and offerings. You may visit our website at www.jfcf.org for more information. And always remember that with the abundance of God's grace, we can reign in life through Jesus Christ.